Well, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, whatever time you are viewing this video. I wanted to continue on um, with the teaching series in altars, uh, regarding altars. Their significance in the Bible, their significance to God, and their significance to us today. Um, I did stop doing the live recordings because I wanted to give the people that were um, joining me in the Bible study um, live um, the opportunity to be um, free and candid with their questions and not have to um, worry about their questions being aired or the responses and things like that. And I'm not that technical, um, technically savvy, so I don't know how to edit the videos yet. So <laughs> give me some grace. <laughs> but anyway, I want to let's just go ahead and pray. And so we can get on our journey because um, we're still dealing with Abraham. Abraham had more than one altar. He had four altars that were very important, uh, not just to him, but they're also important to God and they're very important to us today because we can learn uh, uh, regarding about his altars and how they parallel with many places uh, that we'll find ourselves in life and in this Christian journey and how they'll our lives will bring us to those altars and the things that he went through that brought him to those altars and those places where he cried out to God. So uh, let's just pray, God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time that we have to come before you in the study of your word, God, in the teaching, God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would have free and full control. We ask that you would teach this lesson. Give your people what they, hallelujah, what you want them to have, not what I want them to have, but what you have already ordained and prepared for them. We thank you for it now. We're listening to you, full obedience to you and your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So let's look at where we are um, in our teaching. We are in Genesis chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verses 8 through uh, chapter 13, verses 4. It's a lot to cover, but we're going to try to um, do our best. We might have to do two parts to um, to, to uh, the teaching on this third altar. We'll see how the Spirit leads. But our uh, focus for this study um, is again addressing the significance of the altar, these altars of Abram and how we can apply it to our life. So in this session, we're going to be revisiting the altar where he called on the name of the Lord because it's significance. We, what we can do is we can't do a drive by with this. You see, it's too meaty. It's too deep. It's too in depth for us to think that, oh, he just called on God and, and, and moved on. No, this really means something and this should really impact us in how we approach God and how we call on him. Because when we call, when you see these words in verse uh, 12, chapter 12, verse 8, call, he called upon the name of the Lord. It just doesn't mean he just said, oh God, and he left. No, this means that he actually asked God, he invited him to an encounter. God, what he was saying was, God, I want to encounter you. Huh? I want to know you. Huh? I want you to show me yourself. Reveal all that you are to me so that I can know who you are, so I can have a portion of you in my heart, so I can partner with you, so I can be one with you. So we're inviting God. When we're calling upon the name of the Lord, we're asking to know God and to know his ways. We're asking God to come be revealed to us in a way that will empower us and impact us and change us uh, and transform us uh, and move us uh, from where we are right now. So look at this. Let's look at this. It says in verse eight, it says, um, I'm going to look at the portion B. After he got back to Bethel, it says, There he built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. So what did he do? He invited him. He gave him honor. He invited him. He gave him authority. He said, I'm relinquishing my authority because I see that you are greater. Huh? And I need you more than I need myself. Oh, I'm going to just sit right there huh? just for a minute because so many of 
of us. We don't see that God is greater. We don't see our need for him. We need God every day, every minute, every hour. Uh, the scripture tells us it's in him we live. Uh, it's in him we move. It's in him that we have our very being. So beloved, we can't get to a place where we think we don't need God because we do. So Abraham, he got to this place where he recognized that God was in a high and a holy position. Huh? He was lofty. He was powerful. He is mighty. And he released his right huh, to be powerful. He released his right to have authority over his life. He released his control. He submitted and surrendered. Huh? He submitted and surrendered to the authority and the control and the right of God because he knew that God was greater. He recognized him as being greater. And see, this is what Jesus invites us to do. He invites us to recognize his greatness. He said, you've been trying to do it on your own, but I got, I'm greater. I can do this thing through you. If you'll let me partner with you, I can do it through you. This is why in uh, Matthew 11 and 28 through 30, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because I'm meek and lowly in heart and you'll find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's saying, you've been trying to do it on your own. You've been trying to do it by your own power, by your own might, by your own strength. But beloved, he has a rest for us. He has a place of peace for us. He has a place of encounter for us. But what we must do is we must relinquish our authority. We must relinquish our control. We must say yes to the Lord, submit to his will, submit to his control and invite him to come and fellowship with us so that we can know who he is and we can understand his ways. Now, I in that study, I went over some of the attributes of God because knowing his attributes is knowing who he is. Uh, understanding his attributes is understanding who his ways, understanding how he operates. So um, in this time of, and of study, we found out that God was infinite. That means he's self-existing. He had no origin. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. It says in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It didn't say in the beginning somebody created God because God is self-sufficient. He's self-sustaining. Nobody created him. He's without beginning. He's without end. He's the all-powerful God. So there's no creator to God. He is the creator. Psalm 147 and 5 tells us, great is our God and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. He's infinite. We can't know all that there is to know about God. We can't exhaust him. Colossians 1.17 says, and he is before all things. Before there was anything, there was God. It says, and in him, all things hold together. Oh, it's because of our great God. He holds everything we see together by the word of his mouth. He's all powerful. Oh my God, thank you today. Thank you today that there's none greater than him, right? He's immutable. That means he never changes. Uh, Hebrew 13 and uh, 8 says God is the same Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Malachi 3 and 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your descendants Oh, Jacob of Jacob are not destroyed. So our descendants that uh, supplant, that play tricks, uh, all the descendants that act like Jacob, they won't be destroyed because God don't change. He's able to save. Uh, he saved Jacob. He changed his name. Uh, he changed his character so he can do the same thing. What we have to do is have hope. Uh, we know that God is, doesn't change and he can do it. He's supernatural. God is self-sufficient. He has no needs. He doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need to drink. He doesn't need sleep. He doesn't need what we need. He created us and we have needs, but our God does not have the needs that we need. Oh, he, he enjoys our worship. 
He enjoys it. But let me tell you, what did Jesus say? He said, if these don't pray me, the rocks will cry out. Uh, oh God, hallelujah, the birds sing his praise. Uh, so it's like if you don't open your mouth and praise him, uh, you don't have to because he's created all creation to give him praise. Uh, he created you and me to give him praise. But if we don't, uh, the rocks will cry out. The birds will sing his praise. Uh, the bees will buzz and hum his glory. Uh, so beloved, don't get bigoty. Don't think, uh, oh, that God can't do something without you because beloved, he'll raise up. Uh, he'll raise something up and someone up uh, to give him glory, to give him honor, and to understand that he's the self-sufficient one and that he needs no one. God is omnipotent. He has all power. He doesn't need us to have his power. He can do what he wants to do. But let me tell you, he partnered with us. He chose to partner with us. He created Adam and Eve in the world, beloved, because he wants to partner with us. He wants he heaven on earth and he wants to do it through us. He's all powerful. Uh, Psalm 33 and 6 said, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. Uh, he has unlimited power. Uh, his power can't be contained. Uh, his power can't be exhausted. Uh, uh, the word says it's dunamis. Uh, it's explosive power. Uh, it can blow things up. Uh, it can create things. Uh, it can sustain things. Uh, it can heal things. Uh, his word can travel through time and space. It's a continuum of power. His power is like no other power. So he's the all power, omnipotent God. Uh, and we give him glory. Uh, he's omniscient. He knows everything. Uh, God knows the end from the beginning. Uh, oh, he knew it, beloved. He already knows. He knows when we're going to say yes. He knows when we're going to say no. Uh, the Bible says that he knows our thoughts are far off. Uh, God knows everything, beloved. There's nothing that can be hidden from him. Look, Isaiah 46, 9 through 10 says, remember the former things and those of long ago. I am the Lord and there is no other. I am God and there's none like me. I made known from the end, from the beginning, the ancient times, what still is to come. He says, I will, my purpose will stand and I will do what I please. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the God we serve. We don't have to be afraid because he already knows what people are going to do. He already knows their thoughts. He said, I knew Pharaoh's heart was going to be hard. That's why I knew I had to send those plagues so my people could be free. I already knew. God already knows. He knows our end. He knows the end of the earth. He knows the end of all things because he's the creator and the sustainer of all things. We give him glory today. He's omnipresent. He's here right now. He's with you right now. It doesn't matter what time of day or night because our God don't sleep, beloved. He's always present. He's always present. He's everywhere. There's nowhere. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I ascend to the highest mountain, you're there. No matter where we go or what we do, what we can count on is God is there. He is omnipresent. We cannot go anywhere from his presence. Jeremiah 23, uh, 23 through 24 says, I am God at hand. I am a God at hand, declares the Lord. That means I'm right there. I'm the present God. I'm right at hand and I am not far off. He said, can man hide himself in secret places and I cannot see him? declares the Lord. Do I not feel the earth, declares the Lord. So there's nothing hidden before God. There's no whispering. There's no secrets. There's nothing that God doesn't see. And when he wants to, he'll reveal every hidden thing. Uh, we don't have to worry. That's why it's good to pray, beloved. It's good to have a relationship with God because he'll reveal the secrets of our enemies. Uh, he'll tell us what they're doing. He'll tell us what they're saying. He'll tell us what the enemy is plotting. He'll say, don't go that way. Go this way. Don't say that. Say this. Don't go over there. Go over here. Don't mix with them. Go over here. Just be still. Be quiet. He'll tell us everything, beloved. He'll reveal to us the secrets of the enemy. He'll reveal to us. You know, uh, some people, they have open visions. They see strategic meetings happening and they hear the things being discussed because God reveals them. He said, call to me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things uh, that you never knew. So it's important for us to call all on the name of the Lord. 
Lord. Look at this. God is wise. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's full of perfection and unchanging wisdom. He said in the beginning, wisdom was with me. Wisdom was with me. Wisdom calls out to us to say, come and I want you to partner with me. I want to make you wise because wisdom is, God is full of wisdom. Wisdom is a part of God's character. Beloved, look at this. Romans eleven thirty three. it says, Oh, the depths of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable are his ways. Uh, we can't search all the wisdom there is to know and have about God. Uh, but what we can do is get all we can while we can. Uh, oh, we want to be wise. We want wisdom. Uh, we want to be wise and not in our own conceits, but we want the wisdom of God. We want the wisdom of God. So if we have time... Study Proverbs 8. Study Proverbs because Proverbs is a book about wisdom. And wisdom is what we need. It's the principal thing. It's the principal thing. Wisdom is. And say, and scripture tells us, James 1 say, if we lack it, we can ask God who gives it liberally and he won't discipline us. And he won't say, you should have known that. No, he won't do that to us because he wants us to ask. He knows we don't know. It's pride that keeps us from asking God for his wisdom and for help. But what we want to do is we want to ask God. We need his help. We need his wisdom because he knows everything. Amen, beloved. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. He is infinitely unchangeable and true. Look at this. God remains faithful to us when we're unfaithful. He is always doing what is right and we can count on him. God is good, beloved. He's unchanging in his kindness. He is true to his word. He is true to his people. He's a covenant keeping God. Uh, he, Psalm 34 say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Try him and know him today. Uh, try him and know him. You'll be satisfied with his goodness. You'll be satisfied with his grace. You'll be satisfied with his mercy. God God is a loving God and you can be satisfied with his love. He so loved the world that he gave Jesus, his only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Because why? We call upon his name. God loves us in our sin and he loves us enough to get us out. He loves us. He loves us even when we're in our sin, but he loves us so much that he don't want us to stay there. He made a way to get us out and his name is Jesus. All we have to do is receive Jesus Christ as our Lord. He paid the way. He made a way. He is the way, the truth and the life. And no man can come to the Father except by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. So we thank God for his character. And that's not all of it, beloved, but we could just, we could go on and on about the attributes of God. And this is what calling upon the name of the Lord is. It's an invitation for God to come and so that we can encounter him and know him and know his ways. We want to know him and we want to know his ways. Now I want you to think about this. I have a couple of questions here. What have your encounters with the Lord done for you? What have your encounters with him done for you? What have they brought you through? Sometimes we need to think about that. What has my encountering God done for me? What has he brought me through? Have I, do I know him as a healer? Do I know him as a deliverer? Do I know him as a, a, a provider? Do I know him as my protection? How do I know him? How have I encountered him in this life? And what has he brought me through? Because we need to have memorials. And what we do is we say, God, you met me here. And we remember that. So see, problems going to come again. Huh? Scriptures say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. But if I have something to go back to. And I say, oh God, you did this. Oh God, you did that. Oh God, you brought me through this. I remember and I won't get low and I won't get hopeless huh? and I won't get in a place where I think that God can't do it huh? because baby, God can do anything but fail. Huh? Oh, his name is not failure. His name huh, is success. His name is victory. His name is hope. His name is deliverance. His name is peace. Huh? His name is wonderful counselor, mighty God. Huh? Oh, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. There's nothing he can't do. There's nothing impossible. So make yourself memorials of the things that God has brought you through so you won't forget. 
Then look at then the quest, next question. What uh, uh, have they placed a desire on you to know him more and to seek him? Has have what you've gone has what you've gone through placed a desire in you to know God more, to seek Him more, and to love Him more? What has the encounter with God done for you? Do you want more of it? Do you seek Him more? Are you hungry for Him? Huh? Oh God, help us today. Do you love Him more than you did before because He brought you through? Because He showed He showed Himself strong because He proved Himself. We must know and seek and reflect on the goodness of God. This is how we call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, this is what they says in Acts uh, 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 10, 9 and 10. It said, it said that we we'll call on the Lord. Those that call upon the Lord shall be saved. Confess with our mouth, believe in our heart. But it says we call on him. We're going to call on him. Because we want to encounter him. We want to know him. We want to know his ways. We want to fall in love with him over over and over and over and over again. So I'm going to wrap this up and we're going to come back. We're going to have part uh, two to this uh, segment, segment number three, altars three. I pray it was a blessing to you, beloved. If you have questions, uh, you can email, text, whatever. Put a message at the bottom. I love you with the love of Jesus. I pray that the word of God has will indwell you richly. We'll be back in a little while uh, with part three, part with number three, part two. Excuse me. God bless. <laughs>